um, the price of um, fertilizer, inorganic fertilizer, has increased, you know, enormously in Kenya. Therefore, making it unaffordable to um, smallholder um, business farmers. And because the farmer, because the farmers can no longer afford it, the uh, fertilizer input in the agricultural and the crop production sector is, is less than adequate, or sometimes it is not even used at all. You know. And because of uh, low application, a crop yield is generally um, poor. So what can we do to help the farmers increase output um, in the face of rising um, price of um, fertilizer? So our contribution is to find uh, biological means of fixing nitrogen to the soil so that the farmers can then uh, spend money on other forms of uh, inorganic fertilizer. Biodiversity is very important uh, to people because it is the source of medicine, it is the source of food, it is the source of economic uh, resources, you know, such as wood, um, tanning, tanning material for preservation of food, and uh, many other important resources that are, um, can be uh, construed as uh, directly as biodiversity. Therefore, conservation and management of biodiversity is an integral part of sustainable development. Plant growth promoting bacteria. And one important uh, group is called the rhizobia. Legumes are a very important uh, group of crops in Africa. You know, they are uh, easy to manage, they are important for their plant architecture, for quick maturity, and therefore drought, uh, drought evasion. And uh, in the dry lands, they are very important protein alternatives. So the co-benefit of legume cultivation in this sense, therefore, leads to the build-up of rhizobia in the soil, which enhances, at least according to the study assumption, the uh, population of rhizobia and, and therefore nitrogen fixation. Um, so it deals with how the system captures and utilizes the below ground biodiversity and also uh, how the totality of uh, uh, irrigation and uh, the type of cover crop affect the structure of the ecosystem in the long run. So that's what the study uh, dealt with. And also to determine um, how rhizobia assemblage varied in the natural range, um, plots planted with cereals, those planted with modulating legume crops under different uh, rotational regimes, including immediate follow or uh, rest period. So we sampled four categories of plots uh, or rangeland. Normally, uh, inoculants are applied um, during, before initial cropping of, of legume. But this result is showing us that after pre cropping of legume and then followed by um, sequential cropping of the same kind of legume, that reservoir population are, are accumulated. And the rest period that followed did not result in rapid decline in reservoir population. So, the variation uh, for recommendations, uh, we stated that uh, the variation in native rhizobia population should be assessed um, in the natural range and linked to seasonal changes. Um, two, it will be important to um, assess the minimum threshold of rhizobia population and the density of legume plants required to fix sufficient nitrogen, you know, uh, you know, for uh, a given amount or given density of um, legume and non-legume plants. It will also be important to determine whether nitrogen leaks from grain legumes uh, or from nodules of grain legumes do occur naturally, and if so, 
to quantify this um, agronomically. And finally, um, we recommend that farmers should be encouraged um, to integrate legumes in dryland farming. A poor approach to um, derive the co-benefits of protein alternatives, quick maturity of crops, and um, soil atmosphere by um, uh, chemical interactions that lead to nitrogen fixation and therefore improved soil fertility as an uh, environmentally benign way to restore soil fertility uh, at a better economic cost to farmers and uh, therefore to increase farmers benefit uh, and make farming uh, more affordable uh, yeah those are the recommendations that we we came up with. There are more recommendations, of course, uh, with the um, uh, full paper, which uh, is available.